Hello everybody, my name is Borislav Polnowski. We're here with Whitewater Rafting Education, Episode 2, Equipment. We're going to guide you through all the mandatory and proper equipment that you need to go into the river. Let's start with the helmets. There are a lot of different types of helmets. You want to choose the ones designed for whitewater and that are the most comfortable for you. As a beginner paddler, almost every helmet will do the job. You should always have your buckle on in the river. You should be able to open your mouth with the buckle on, but it shouldn't slip from your chin. There are helmets who have ear protection, which are recommended for kayaking in case you flip. The full face helmet is used mostly in steep class 5 rivers. They are made to protect your teeth and chin against impact. Helmets with a visor are comfortable because your eyes will be protected from direct sunlight. Also, they help protect your face from direct impacts. The life jacket is a very important part of your safety equipment. Even if you're a good swimmer, take the time to choose the right one. Every life jacket must have an approval stamp. According to the American Coast Guard, there are five types of personal flotation devices, or for short, PFDs. For whitewater sports, we need type 3 and type 5. Type 5 life jackets are intended for specific activities. The biggest difference in the features between both is the quick release belt. It is designed for kayakers and rescuers. You can have a cow tail, or you can use it to tow a boat, or do life bait rescue. When you're in danger because of the thing you attach to, you can easily release just by pulling the quick release, you will disconnect and you can swim free. The Type 3 PFD is designed to place swimmers in face-up position in the water. The Type 3 is the one that we recommend. It is the most comfortable and the less expensive one. Depending on how the life jacket fits your body, they are profiled as low profile, medium and high profile. We should always dress in the proper equipment according to the weather conditions. In the cold countries, people use dry suits. When the water is below 5 degrees Celsius, the body cannot heat the water into a wetsuit and hypothermia comes quick. It is much easier for the body to heat up the air in the suit. A dry suit today is made out of Gore-Tex or other breathing material. To keep water out, on the wrist and neck you have the so-called gaskets. They are made from latex and are designed to go firmly on the skin so that water cannot pass through. A choking sensation may occur on the neck. If you put a finger inside that means it is loose enough. Putting the dry suit is tricky. First you put the lower part without standing up, then you put your shoes, hands and head. It is easier if you have a beanie on your head to keep your hair from pulling. Closing the zipper all the way is essential. There are two kinds of zippers, metal and plastic. The metal one is more expensive, durable and needs more maintenance. There are different models with P-zippers for men and ladies. And remember, always check if the zipper is all the way closed. In the countries with a mild climate, wetsuits are more popular. The most common material to make a wetsuit is called neoprene. The proper wetsuit should be tight on your body. The water gets inside your wetsuit from the stitches, zippers, your sleeves, neck and feet. Then a thin layer of the water that stays inside is getting warmed by your body. There are different thicknesses of the suit, 3 mm, 4 and 5 mm, as well as different types. Long john, short suits, long sleeves, summer wetsuits and others. The zipper can be in the back or in the front. You should be careful putting on, on the wetsuit with your fingernails because you may rip the suit just by pulling on the material. You always take the wetsuit off inside out like a snake skin. Dry tops. A simple and cheap nylon jacket helps you on the windy days. Make sure that it has some sort of velcro so you can make it tight on the neck, wrist and waist. If you are a kayaker or a river guide, you may want to look into the more expensive dry tops that have latex gaskets on the neck and wrist. This will ensure you stay dry in the upper part of your body, even if you go for a quick swim. The important features are a layer of material, cover the latex so it doesn't burn in the sun. A separate layer for your spray skirt and a front pocket for car keys is also essential. In countries with a warmer climate, and warm waters, you can go rafting with pretty much everything that is synthetic. It keeps you off the sun and keeps you refreshed. Shoes are essential for your performance as a guide, rescuer or a private boater. 
If you're just racing or doing commercial rafting, almost any shoe will do. The more you advance on the river difficulty, weather and terrain, your shoes have to be with a better sticky soil, a better ankle support and better protection. Your shoes should allow you to move quickly on the rocks in case of an emergency. You can find neoprene shoes as well. When you choose your paddle, you want your paddle to be somewhere between your chest and your nose, close to the chin is good. We use aluminum paddles with plastic blades. If you're a guide, you may want to choose a paddle with a wider blade. Guide sticks or guide paddles are usually a little bit longer. If you're a recreational rafter or a racer, you may want to choose a carbon paddle. They make them from carbon Kevlar as well. Be careful with the blade, keep it off rocks. You will see they're super light and they're not so easy to break. You should always carry a rescue rope with you in the river. The rope should be colorful, easy to spot and floatable. It should fit a bag so it can be easily deployed. You should always have one with you on the boat. If you carry a rope, you should always have a knife with you. The water knife has a blunt tip and only one sharp side. It should be easily accessible on your PFD. You can get ones that are folding or the ones that are one piece. A whistle is very important communication device. Because of the noise in the river from the rapids, you can't communicate with your co-paddlers. They can only see you but not hear you. To draw attention, signal for distress or danger, we blow the whistle. One blow is attention, three blows, danger maybe a swimmer or a foot entrapment or a flip boat. In most cases, the whistle is carried in your life jacket, but never on your neck. Webbing. Webbings are perfect for anchors. They can make a good flip line to help you reflip the raft. You could carry it as a belt around your waist or on, in your life jacket. You can also use a long cow tail as a flip line. Carabiners are really helpful when you need to use your rope for mechanical advantage system or just to connect your boat to the rope. They should be with a simple door lock type and you should be able to lock them. If they have a tooth, it can get stuck in the webbing. Pulleys. If you bring one or two pulleys with you, it will be really useful for you in case of a mechanical advantage system so you can extract your boat. A small rope with a Prusik knot in it can be really helpful in case you need to make a mechanical advantage system. Nobody in the river will carry Xanders. You can always carry it in your pocket with carabiners or with your pulley. Other equipment, neoprene socks, gloves, pogies or skull cap. They're designed to keep your limbs warm in the cold weather. The pogies give you the best grip on the paddle and lets you use your technique properly. In the river, it's always a good idea to bring a first aid kit. You can keep it in a dry bag. The normal dry bag looks like this. This is how you open it. You put everything you need inside. And this is how you close it. If it's keeping the air inside, it means it's working. Okay guys, that was it with our second episode of Whitewater Rafting Education Equipment. If you wanna help us keep those series up, you can donate. You can see more information in the link below. Stay tuned, have fun, and see you on the river.